If you use Excel, pivot tables are one of the best things you can spend your time learning. They allow you to perform in seconds what would normally take you hours or maybe days to do manually. But even with all their wonderful features, they still have a few things that tend to irritate most pivot table users. One of these things are the filter controls. Now the filter controls are nice. They allow us to go in and filter the report by some selected criteria. But when you have long lists, these checkboxes can become awkward and cumbersome. The introduction of slicers into Excel really helped with filtering pivot tables because now we could go up here and we could filter through the slicer, which was a lot easier than going through those checkboxes. But if you are going to use slicers, you probably don't want to leave the old school filter controls on the screen. So to turn these controls off, you can go up to pivot table analyze and in the show section, click the field headers button. This will turn off the slicers, but the downside is you also lose your headings. So notice the difference with and without the slicer buttons. This is not a reasonable sacrifice. So let's see how we can turn off those older filter buttons without losing our headings. To do this, we're gonna use a little bit of Visual Basic Magic. Here's the code that we're going to copy and paste into Excel. The name of this macro is Hide Pivot Table Filters. So I'm gonna highlight all the code and copy it, Control C. Then we're gonna switch back over to Excel. On any sheet tab, we're gonna right click and choose View Code. This opens up the Visual Basic Editor. In the Project Explorer section in the upper left, right click on any entry and choose Insert Module. On the Module sheet, we'll do a Control V for Paste. Here is the Hide Pivot Table Filters macro. You can close the Visual Basic Editor. One of the ways to run the macro is to go up to View, and in the upper right-hand corner, Macros, View Macros. And here's our Hide Pivot Table Filters macro. We'll run it, and you can see that the filter controls are gone, but we did not lose our titles. Now the downside to that code is that once those buttons are gone, they're just gone. We can't bring them back, not without different code. So let's go back down to one of those sheet tabs, right-click View Code and we'll double click on the module one module. Let's make a small change to this code to make the macro even more flexible. So instead of calling it hide pivot table filters, we'll call it toggle pivot table filters because we're going to have this so that every time we click it, we either turn the filters on or off. The trick here is to replace this false statement and we're going to highlight the pivot field enable item selection option. And we're gonna copy that and then we're gonna say paste. So we're comparing the selection to itself so we're saying, I want the item selection to be equal to whatever item selection is. Well, this won't change anything. So we're gonna take that second instance of item selection and place the word not in front of it. So item selection will be equal to what item selection is not. So if items are being displayed, I wanna be equal to hidden. But if the items are being hidden, I want to be equal to displayed. It's a weird way of thinking, but it works quite well. And now if we go to macros, view macros, and toggle the filters, they're currently off, but now they're on. But using the exact same macro, I'll toggle the filters, they're currently on, now they're off. Now one of the downsides of using the macro in this way is we have to go up to view, go to macros, view macros, open up the macros dialog box, and that's a lot of clicks. Let's shorten this process by adding the macro to our quick access toolbar. So we'll go to the down arrow next to the QAT, go to more commands, We'll switch this from popular commands to macros. There's our toggle macro. We'll hit add, move that to the right. We'll do a little customizing, change the icon, and customize what the button's gonna say when you hover your mouse over it. Hit okay. Now we have a filter button when we hover our mouse, show hide the pivot table filter controls. And when I click the button, I can either hide or show the filter controls in the pivot table. Now a downside to this is if you email this file to somebody, that button will not be on their quick access toolbar but there is a way to make that happen. We'll right click and remove this, but now going back to our customization section, more commands. When we switch from popular commands to macros, instead of adding this macro to our quick access toolbar, which will be there all times, let's switch this option here and choose the file we're in instead of all the documents. Now when we add the macro, this feature will only appear on the quick access toolbar when this particular file is open. So we'll do the same customization, hit okay, so we have the button, it still works the same way. But the advantage now is when you email this file to somebody, that button will appear on their quick access toolbar. And if you'd like to see more tips and tricks and really cool things to do with the QAT, check out my video link in the corner here for a video I made which shows all the secrets of the QAT. So now with the click of a button, we can turn on or off those older style filter controls without losing our headings.
Now let's look at a more focused use of using VBA to hide filter controls. I have a series of buttons up here at the top to demonstrate each of these scenarios. These buttons represent the four zones when you're populating a pivot table. The rows, the columns, the values, and the filters. As before, if we want to hide all of the filter controls, I can click this button and hide every filter in the pivot table. But what if I just want to hide the filters for the rows, but not the columns or the global filters? Well, this one, notice when I click it, only hides the filter controls for region and product, but it doesn't hide supplier or the global filters. This one will hide the column filters, in this case supplier, but not the row filters or the global filters. And then finally, this one will hide the global filters, sales and state rep, but it won't hide the row or column filters. Here was the VBA code that we saw earlier when we wanted to hide all of the controls. There's a for next loop that sets each filter to a false state. We modified that with a not operator, so we could turn that into a toggle, but that's still applied to all row, column, and global filter fields. This used a for next loop to iterate through each of the pivot fields. But if we change it from pivot fields to row fields, then this will iterate through each row-based entry, but not the column-based or global filter entries. The same can be said for column fields to hide the column entries, but not the row entries or the global filters. And then finally, for the global filters, we use the code page fields. Now, if you want to get even more focused, we won't use a for next loop. We'll just perform a targeted change using the pivot fields option, but specifically select the product entry. Of course, you could substitute product with whatever the name of your field is. Back in the Excel file, I'm going to click this button to open up the Visual Basic Editor. And here we can see examples of each of those code sets. Remember to download this file so you can take this code and copy and paste it into your files and then just change it as needed. Thanks for watching. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about this feature if you've ever seen it before. And if you have any requests for an upcoming video, put that down in the comments as well. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.